Hello. Hi, everybody. As you know, this week's a little different. We're going to be putting out a video every day, seven videos for seven days of the week. And today's video is about the idea of having crew versus no crew. No crew. Yes. Um, for an ocean crossing. Yeah, we've had experience with both. <laughs> yes. And, and yeah. yeah, our conclusion is that it's much better to not have crew if it's the two if if it's two people. Um, we experienced crew on our way to the Bahamas as well as on our way from the U.S. to Bermuda, and there was a reason we stopped in Bermuda instead of going the entire length. Of, yeah, we we weren't gonna stop in Bermuda. Yeah. And then we decided we were going to stop in Bermuda. So, um, crew is phenomenal if you are racing or yep. if you're doing short stints. Um, or delivery. Or, or delivery, yes. Yeah. So, our situations were that we found crew. Um, we're going to just talk about the crew we had uh, during our Atlantic crossing. Everybody told us they that need we crew. needed crew because and, I guess we seem, we've never crossed an ocean before. Yeah. And we didn't have the experience. And it was like our families and family's friends. And, and everyone we ran into. Like, mm -hmm. we'd just be in a new town and they're like, oh, you're crossing the ocean? Do you have crew? Mm -hmm. Oh, thank goodness you're going to, you're planning on having crew. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we did feel very pressured to have crew. It was not our original intention, but it made our families feel so much better. And... It just, you know, everybody was saying that we needed this. So we thought, maybe we really do. The problem was, we never talked to anybody else who had crossed an ocean. Yeah. Um, and once we actually got to the Azores and we talked about crew, we asked people specifically, like, have you ever done this? They looked at us like we had three heads. Like, yeah, like why did you yeah. have crew <laughs> crossing an ocean? That's a terrible idea. And these were people who had had the experiences and... Yeah, like circumnavigators mm -hmm. and everything. They're like, no, you don't want crew. Yeah. And so the biggest reasons are because this is your boat. It's a long-term experience. You are not racing. Mm -hmm. And... You know your boat. You know, you know your know boat. what yes. it does, when it does. And you also take really good care of your boat because it's your boat. And it needs to keep, keep, keep taking care of you for a long time. Right. The difference is this is our home. Um, with our crew, we found him uh, on well, findacrew.net. Yeah. And there was no respect for the boat as a home. Yeah. Whenever we said, like, you know, please do it this way, that's making a mess or it's getting the boat really salty or something. He's like, it's a boat. They're supposed to be salty. Yeah. Um, and and just, no, it yeah. doesn't have to be that way. And we know that because we live here. Yeah. And so <laughs> uh, as soon as the crew got here, everything started rusting inside the boat. We personally had quite a negative experience. Uh, the problem was he had a an agenda and he wanted to get there as fast as possible. And therefore wasn't understanding that the sales had to last us beyond this trip. <laughs> yeah, he wanted the sails um, set for maximum efficiency at every moment. Yeah. So if you see a storm coming, you keep the sails up until the storm hits, then you reef like right as it's hitting. Where we see a storm coming and reef down and just hang out, wait. When it hits, we're like, oh, there's a storm. And then it blows over, and then after it calms down, then we get the sails back up. Um, there was the problem of safety. Uh, we, as the captains are responsible for this crew member yeah. um, and if something were to happen to him we're it, responsible it would fall on us um, and so it was a very big problem when he would refuse to wear a life jacket and be clipped in on watch yeah so we told him first off like whenever you're out especially at night life jacket on and clipped in mm -hmm. and then if it's rough weather life jackets are on you clip in if you go on deck all this mess uh, and we'd come out like he'd be finishing his night watch and I'd come out and he'd be out there no life jacket N nothing at all. It was a problem because we felt that he was putting us in danger as well as himself. And um, for a short-term crossing, I think he would have been a very good asset. He knew how to sail. Uh, he knew how to race. Yeah, he knew how to race. He really understood setting sails for the optimal, like getting just those squeezing that half a knot more out of the sails like he was very good at that the problem was 
Um, he didn't have an understanding of of long-term effects it would have on the boat. And he didn't have that care for the boat that we were looking for. Um, as this is our home, um, this is going to be our home for a long time. So Yeah, there was also an issue with chain of command. He yeah. appointed himself supreme leader of all of the things that happened on the boat. <laughs> and refused to listen to us. and Which I, was a problem. Which, big problem. Personalities definitely clashed. And that's going to yeah. be a problem uh, when you find crew is that it's three people or more in a very small space. And you don't know each other very well. Yeah. And um, Herbie and I were pretty easygoing, um, as you know. And he was very... Angry. Angry. A lot. Uh, yeah. About small things. Like, I wasn't fast enough raising the sails because I was weak oh, yeah. and a lot of uh, the reason we got stuck in the doldrums on the way and the reason it took 20 days, days to get to uh, Bermuda was because he forced us to leave at a time when the weather was not right. Yeah so a while before he asked me for schedules and dates of when we'd be departing and arriving at places yeah. so I gave him like a tentative schedule and was like you know the winds will say when the winds do and Nope. Like, yeah, he was it, like, we he was days... like, if we don't go now, I'm not coming. And yeah. we were like, oh gosh, we have to have this crew. Like, oh, we so gotta we just go. So we left, and it was not good. Yeah, we sh- honestly we should have waited about another two weeks mm. for the weather to be right, and then we would have been fine. Our experience does not have to be your experience. Yeah, everybody's different, and everybody gets along differently with different personalities. But I would still say that. Having a crew on a long-term um, voyage, such as a, an ocean crossing, is not the greatest idea because whoever you get, it's guaranteed that they will not know your boat like you do. They will not know how it... They may have amazing sailing experience, but no boat sails the same, and mm-hmm. no captain style is the same. The fact of the matter is when it's two people, it's actually a lot easier than when it's three people. Um, with two people, especially two people who... Yeah, we're married. Are, like we, yeah, we love each other. We're a we, team. We love being around each other. We understand how each other operates. Um, and we have already kind of given each other jobs on the boat. Mm-hmm. And so adding a third person into that really disrupts the flow. And there isn't the same amount of trust between the people. Um, like we have... Yeah. In intense amount of respect for each other's uh, abilities and trust that we will communicate when something is off or we need help. Mm-hmm. When he needed help, it was a matter of pride. Um, yeah. So he would not communicate with us. So Maddie was never allowed to help him because that would... Right. Oh, he could not have that. Right. And if I tried to help, he'd yell at me. So <laughs> it was a lot of just negativity. Yes. Yeah. Now... Not every situation is the same. Mm-hmm. Like, we've had two crew members total, ever. Mm-hmm. And, uh, like, if you have, like, a lifelong friend and you guys are, like, sailing together, technically, one person's owner and one person's crew. That's fine. Like, if you know someone really well and can be around them all the time and you know them, like, through and through, absolutely. That, and that's I would a story. I would also practice living with them on the boat. Yeah. For an extended period of time before you go out yep. on your voyage. Honestly, like, unless you really, really know them. Like, I know Maddie very well, so I'm willing to cross an ocean with her. <laughs> we didn't do much background check on this guy, like, the background getting to know him and all these things, because um, our previous one... We had done the background, and we had been friends with him previously, prior to going, and uh, it turned out that... Yeah. Oh my gosh, like it was not, not the, the same, same person. Uh, when we were living with him on the boat and when he was taking any kind of instruction or orders, he did not respond well. Now, a really big thing, if you're cruising and it's a couple like us and we're out cruising, the boat is set up for us to run and we know how it works. We know when we put up which sail, when we take down which sail. So we're both in sync with everything and we do it in a very safe manner because we've been doing this for a long time you get another person in and now you have to teach them all the like teeny tiny minute details of your boat and if you do you're probably going to finish teaching them after they've already left because you know it it is it's 
it's okay to teach them everything, but the problem with that is that you're never, they're going to be very small things. Um, they might be doing it right, but they're not doing it your way. And, and then, so yeah. it, it gets problematic. Like if we're rushing to tie a sail down and the sail tie is not where we always put it. Or tied the way we always do it. Then it can be a problem because then you're struggling. You're either searching for it or you can't get this weird knot that you've never seen undone. Yeah. And so you have to really make sure that you've hit on every single little thing because there's going to be a time when you could be in danger and it's really all about safety and for us our safety we felt was compromised by having a third person aboard um, a because it's another person that we would need to rescue if they're not following our safety procedures yeah. and b we didn't know if he would actually try to save us if something yeah. were to happen yeah i don't think you really <laughs> like this much and and c <laughs> It's just having a third person kind of like wandering around and it, it just put doing things differently than you would do them can be a problem if you're in a pinch and yeah. you have to really work together and be a team. Uh, it's a matter of just positivity and happiness during the crossing. You want it yeah. to be a positive experience. Yeah. So when we were too slow for him, then he was very negative and angry. And then that kind of brought down the whole morale in the boat because... Mm -hmm. We feel bad because we're making him not happy. Mm -hmm. and We felt like it was our fault. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so it was like morale was just really down when he was on the boat. It was a very negative feeling amongst all of us. Yeah, and I felt anything that I said, I had to like be 100% sure that it would work. Because usually with Maddie and I, like when we're like planning or we look at the conditions, it's like, hmm, I think we might be faster on the other tack. And we'll be like, all right, let's try it. So we'll tack. And if it is, great. If it's not, we'll go back. But with him, I had the, like, he'd ask me. And if I didn't have a 100% answer for why, and I couldn't say, eh, just to see what happens. Oh, my God. He'd just, like, mm -hmm. tear me a new one. And it's like, dude, calm down. So the second leg um, from Bermuda to the Azores, we just felt like there was this incredible weight off our shoulders. It's because freedom. we weren't doing it for someone else. We were doing it for just us. We were doing it at our pace, our way, with our routine. And yes, the watch schedule was a big difference. Yeah. That was the one good thing about having crew. Yeah, crew, you get your sleep. You get your sleep. So we had to really figure out a watch schedule that worked for us where we weren't exhausted all the time, um, which honestly was not very hard. Yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about our watch schedule in another video that we do. Um, during this week more specifically because I think that's a very important topic. Yeah, because if you're not if you're sleep deprived, you're not mm -hmm. thinking clearly. Exactly. Um, but I will say that when we did the crossing, just the two of us without crew, everything went smoothly. We had a routine. Yeah. We knew our jobs on the boat. We delegated fairly and we just it was like a it was like it was so much safer without crew. flowing you yeah. know just oh this is happening let's do this okay it, it wasn't nobody questioned each other's judgment if i said something he did it if yeah. he said something we did it i did it. it it just we knew each other was being safe and we knew we could trust each other so it was just like totally enjoyable and it was like we felt it immediately yeah. we felt this just like <sighs> breath of air that we could take once it was just the two of us and I really think it would have been that way with any crew it wasn't just this person yeah it's just we and you figure we live in under 100 square feet mm -hmm. with two people you make it three people it's mm -hmm. really hard I mean especially the fact that once he left we had that bed yeah. <laughs> we had that quarter berth, which is so important For when you're sleeping. having heavy weather because we were getting tossed all over the place in the V berth. So having the quarter berth to sleep in just one person or two people, it was like really important. Um, having less food to make each time I had to make a meal was so important. I mean, there was so much less waste. Without crew, you get more sleep because you get better sleep. Um, in because you have the quarter berth to use. Yeah, you can choose which bed you want to be sleeping in. You make less food, so you have less consumed and less waste. And also, you then need less cost to buy all this food. Mm -hmm. 
and um, you have water. more comfort just mentally because you have full trust and full knowledge of safety and everything flows more calmly because you both know the boat so well you both care for the boat equally and it's just it's so much less pressure uh, because you're just doing it for the two of you you're not doing it for a third person there's not like this extra pressure on you um, to get there at a certain time you understand you have this understanding yeah uh, that's so important so we do recommend that before you do a crossing know that you can do it on your own don't rely on the fact that you'll have a third person yeah now crew is not horrible because actually my first experience in the ocean was as crew mm -hmm. and uh but it wasn't a long crossing it was yeah. just it was like we went from, from one florida to south carolina to charleston yeah. yeah it was like but still like it was his boat and i let him know very clear that it was his boat so whatever he said i just did i didn't question it I wanted to learn, but I was not questioning. Mm -hmm. And the amount of things that I was allowed to do were minuscule. I wasn't allowed to put in or out sails, like nothing. If anything needed to be changed, I woke the captain and then we did it together. And in our case, where we don't have the luxury of cranking on an engine and being like, all right, here, drive a car that's floating. Uh, we had to know that yeah. this person really understood sailing, mm -hmm. um, not just motoring. Yeah, it was rough. It was rough, and I don't think it would have been nearly as rough if it would had been just the two of us. So, that's our conclusion. If yeah. you can help it, cross an ocean without crew. Um, or just cruising in general. Yeah. So. Be sure that each person on your boat has the ability to single-hand it. Know yourselves, know what you're capable of, and... Uh, you know, if it helps you to start out with crew on a small, smaller um, passage, great. Mm -hmm. If that helps you to learn, that's yeah. wonderful. Crew can be such a good thing. Yeah, it's good to like picture crew as an asset to help you grow, mm -hmm. not to get you there. Not a reliance. Like, yeah. don't rely on your crew. So if yeah, once you're good and you you are capable at managing your yacht, then. You're done. You mm -hmm. don't need crew anymore. You you graduated. <laughs> okay, so that's uh, I think that's, that's our opinion. Yes, that's our opinion. Um, we don't race. <laughs> we don't. Yeah, we please. Met... If you have had experience with crew, whether good or bad, we would love to hear about it in the comment section. Um, we're always looking to have conversations about crew because we've heard so many points of view. So varied. Uh, yeah. And, and most of them, honestly, from long-term cruising have had very negative yeah. problems. So we'd love to hear positivity if you have any. Um, but, you know, it's always fun to hear negative problems, too. <laughs> uh, please share your stories and we'll be sure to respond to them. And I think that sums it up. Okay, so tomorrow uh, our video is going to be centered around health, uh, specifically food, dieting, um, and hygiene aboard during the Atlantic Crossing. Mm -hmm. So be sure to subscribe, that way you get your notifications for the next episodes. <laughs> okay, thanks guys.